Hi guys, welcome to the Wolf Dead Podcast! How you doing? Well, oh god, I'm so glad you're here. Hello, it has begun, ladies and gentlemen. The Wolf Den Podcast for the month of May. It is that time. Hi, 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 how you doing, guys? Layer shift, thanks for gifting a sub a whole day ago. I've Oh, there we go. Lizap zap, thank you for the six months. I appreciate it. Boys, listen, I'm gonna be real with you. Nothing happened in the past week. <laughs> it's kind of kind of a bad week for news. I mean, things happened. But there wasn't, like, that one thing that, like, can set the world on fire. You know what I mean? We're, we're always trying to, like, pick apart some Nintendo news or something that we could talk about. Yes. This week, a lot happened with Twitch and YouTube. And I feel uh, qualified to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to care, but I care a lot. So, And in the long run, it might wind up affecting you guys. So it, it could be important to talk about. Podcast listeners, not at all. YouTube no. watchers, yeah. not even a little bit. You guys <laughs> here right this second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, what are we talking about today? We're talking about uh, the, the, the Twitch partner program is making some changes. We're talking about how YouTube yes. is also making some changes to live streaming. We also got to talk about Switch Sports because uh, I've been playing it and it's fantastic. Uh, Sony is... Wait, requiring devs to add demos? That's freaking awesome. Uh, uh, it is and it isn't, but we'll get into that. Uh, Square Enix is selling all of its stuff. <laughs> all, all of its important studios. All of its non-Japanese stuff. Ah. <laughs> it's, uh you have to clarify that. All them Gaijin Studios. Yes. Uh, Yuji Naka was fired from Bell and Wonderworld. <laughs> Wonderland? Which might exp Wonderworld. I think okay. in the game it's Wonderland, but the name of the game is Wonderworld. This game sucks. Uh, I know. Modern Warfare 2 is confirmed and Skull and Bones has leaked online. Wow, cool. All right, that's all the stuff yeah. we got to talk about today. But before we get into anything, we have to talk about what we usually talk about at the beginning of the month. Will. Yes, at the beginning of every month, the good lords over at Sony and Microsoft give you free games. So as long as you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. And yeah. we tell you about them because a lot of times there's some good games and you people just don't don't go to them. Don't get them. And you're what? leaving free games on the table. One of these days we're going to have to... Re when do we get to the point where we retire this segment? Because these have gotten worse and worse. I or maybe think... we should transition it into the new games that are uh, uh, coming to Game Pass and uh, and PlayStation, whatever Still that's PlayStation called. Plus. Yeah. Still PlayStation Plus. Okay. We're going to have to talk well, about the new stuff coming to those services, probably. I think today might be that day, and we'll get into why okay. when we get to the Microsoft stuff. Oh, boy. But first, we start with Sony. Okay. Uh, these, Let's hear it. These PS Plus games are available starting today. Look at this happy uh, man. And they, <laughs> and they include uh, FIFA 22 for the PS5 mm -hmm. and PS4. Uh, Tribes, Tribes of Midgard, also for PS4 and PS5. Uh, and Curse of the Dead Gods, only for PS4. Uh, it, this is uh. Do we like this FIFA? Like I don't, I don't understand the whole. FIFA I don't, situation. I don't know. I, I think when it, uh when it comes to FIFA, as long as it's not the Switch version, it should be okay. 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 Because the Switch version, you know, the old joke with sports games is the same game every year with a except with a roster update. The old the adage. Switch yeah. version of FIFA is literally that. Yes. Same game yes. every year with the roster update. I, the PS4, the PlayStation Xbox versions, they at least change mechanics and graphics and uh, user interface. They don't do that with the Switch version. Uh, Mega Man says, this FIFA was good, and he's the resident soccer expert. Okay. So I called it go. soccer on purpose. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so there it's free now. If you have PlayStation Plus, you could just yeah. download it. Probably because there's a new FIFA coming out, I would assume. Why else would they do that? Yes. Uh, and I should note that um, this isn't a case where you buy, where you get it once and you get both versions. You have to get the PS4 and the PS5 versions separately uh, in order to claim them uh, for Weird. your r- respective Oh, because it's PlayStation. I'm so sick yeah, exactly. of that doing that exactly. shit. Tribes of Midgard looks all right. I've heard this is a very good game. What's an ARPG? Action role-playing game. I figured it out, yes. Will. Don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> so it's it's co-op? Yeah. What's the what's what's so different co-op about this? Co-op or then? solo. So probably co-op. So it looks nice cuz it's cell shaded, but it looks exactly like a uh, Torchlight which looks exactly it's, like Diablo. It's, uh, so. Yeah, it's a dungeon crawler. It's a, right. it's like a gauntlet-style dungeon crawler. It's okay. Nothing wrong with that. It's a tried-and-true formula. The, uh, the X-Men Legends and Marvel Ultimate Alliance games are like that. Okay. Yeah, but those have X-Men oh. in it. This has uh, the true. tribes of Midgard. This, this, does not have, this does not have <laughs> X-Men in it. Okay, so then we also have Curse of Dead Gods. I don't What is this now? This I don't really know much about. Uh, it is a so skill-based single-player roguelike. Oh. So, lost me. <laughs> okay, this looks kind of cool. It looks like uh, Hades? Is that the game everybody yeah. talk about? Yeah. yeah, it looks like that. Okay. Looks kind of cool. Alright, so these are not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, I've never heard of any of these games besides FIFA. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. looks... I mean, they look alright. It's It's an okay... It's a respectable showing. Okay. It's it's not the best. It's not the most glamorous, but it's a respectable showing. I don't know if the same can be said for Microsoft's offerings. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, God. Ew. Okay. So, on the Xbox front, uh, for the entire month of May, you get uh, Yoku's Island Express. You guys know. Uh the one and from may 16th to june 15th you get the inner world the last wind monk okay okay <laughs> now on the uh on the xbox 360 which of course you can always play on your xbox one via backwards compatibility uh from may 1st to the 15th hydro thunder hurricane from may 16th to the 31st is Viva Pinata Party Animals. Now, some of you may know that regardless of the game, I always redeem the the games with gold and the PS Plus games. Because if you don't within the month, you lose it. And you know what? They're nice to have. Maybe I do want to go back and play a, a, a weird game from this collection. And it's easy. You can do it on your browser. Exactly. So I went to go get Hydro Thunder Hurricane because I'm kind of excited for that because I liked Hydro Thunder on Dreamcast. So I'm sure right. this is exactly the same game. I already own that game because this was possible? already a games. It's all it was already a games with gold. And I found if you go back to the keep and you look at the very top link, I found the episode of Wolf Den Live. <laughs> okay, from like 2017. Where we say that this is going to be an Xbox Live Gold game. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my God. I don't know. Thirty-three. It's like 33 minutes in. I don't know if I could uh, have you hear it, but I'm going to play it for them. <laughs> okay. When people forget means it's backwards compatible yeah. on Xbox One. So you can play these Xbox so 360 games on your Xbox One. You. Starting September 1st, Hydro Thunder Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> which is rad because I love the Hydro Thunder on Dreamcast and hopefully this hey. is just as good as that. I doubt it. Probably. <laughs> I severely doubt it. I and was just as much September of a dickhead back then. September 16th through yeah, the much. end of the month, uh, Battlefield the 3. This episode again? August 30th, 2017. Yeah. Y- you said you were excited about it back then. Yeah, because I liked Hydro Thunder on Dreamcast. Did you play it back then when you got it from the games with gold? No. <laughs> <laughs> I apparently not. Also, this is back in the day when we used to have a massive syncing issues. Our audio is yeah. way off from our video. Yeah. That was Wolf Den Alive, episode 87. 
What is today? Yeah. Episode 79. Okay. There you go. Wow. That's, so, that's, is that the first game that has been rehashed? I don't think so. I think uh, one of those Lara Croft games, you know, um, not the main Tomb Raider games, like those downloadable Lara Croft games they did, like Guardian right. of Light. I think that was repeated. Okay. But this is the first one that I know of that there's a video proof that we've talked about before. That's crazy. I mean, that yeah. was like five years ago. <laughs> and what really boggles my mind about the fact that they're recycling Hydro Thunder mm -hmm. when there are a mountain of 360 and now original Xbox games that they could give away for free but aren't. Right. You know, like... uh. I saw Max Payne 1 and 2, which are original Xbox games, are currently on sale for $9 each. Why not one of those? I'm sure Rockstar can, can afford to give those games away. So, so I also don't want to... Yeah. I, I don't want to discredit Viva Pinata because a lot of people love the Viva Pinata series for some reason. However, yeah. I don't think this is one of those ones. No. This, no, I don't think this is. Party Animals has a 56 on Metacritic with a user score of yeah. 6.4. So I don't think uh, this one really uh, worked out for the Viva Pinata fans. No, I don't think. No, this isn't. This isn't even a, a true mainline Viva Pinata game. It's a spinoff from the Viva Pinata TV show that aired in the mid 2000s. I also want to uh, point. Wait, there's a Viva. But what? Yeah. There's a Viva Pinata TV show. I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that. I, okay. I also want to point out that the name of this episode of The Wolf Den Live is Am I Out of Touch? No, the children are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's about... Oh, yeah, it's about... Uh, uh, what, uh, Mario uh, Rabbids. Yeah, Marion Rabbids, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah. I yeah, we gotta just start talking about Game Pass and PlayStation Plus or PlayStation Now, I guess. Cause No, uh, PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus Premium or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well it's not out yet. That's not coming out yeah. for a few months. Um So bad showing this week from for all all yeah. around. But mostly from Xbox. That was very sad. Yeah. Usually they do all right. Uh yeah. anyway. Uh, we have to say thank you to Cadius Plays. Uh, thank you for the three months. Richie Two Fly, thanks for the seven months. Just here to give you my Amazon money. Thank you. I appreciate your Amazon money. You weren't using it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Luke Anton, thanks for the four months. When will the Wolf Den anime series be coming out? Uh, we need a lot more money in the budget for that to happen. Yeah. Actually, no, it's out. It's, 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 uh, you just, uh, it's hard to find, but type in Wolf Den Japanese on YouTube and you might yes. find it. <laughs> there you go. It's it's like anime, but it's not drawn. Right? It's live. It's a live action anime. Yeah. I don't know how to, I, oh wait, you know what? Maybe if you go to the Wolf Den uh, YouTube, did I link it on the bottom? I hope I did. Yes. Okay. So if you go to youtube.com slash wolfden and you scroll all the way down, you see wolfden clips, you see wolfden podcast, you see Bob Wolf, you see Will Wolf, and then you see wolfden Nihongo Chianeru. No, Chian... Chianeru. Yeah. Go over there. And you watch it. It's freaking, uh, it's, it's me dubbed over. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, View Pinata Party Animal is a mini game collection similar to Mario Party Top 100 is the only Bieber periodic game that is bad in the series. What? I think you meant to say Viva Pinata, but <laughs> somehow got it's the only Bieber periodic. It's the only Viva Pinata game that is bad in the series. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Indeed. Kate McCat says, so we moving back to YouTube. Let's talk about the Twitch and YouTube. 
Uh, yeah. We're not going anywhere right now, but... Uh, no. Listen, I've been open about how I don't really like Twitch, and I am I would move in a heartbeat. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about Twitch. Considering changing partner program uh, things, uh, given 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 uh, uh, streamers less less of a cut and whatnot, I'm gonna yeah. read this article that I'm gonna interject with with some things every once in a while. Okay. Twitch is considering changes to the way it handles its partner program that would see streamers receiving less revenue from paid subscribers, but more revenue from displaying ads on stream which is what everybody loves to see. They love to see the ads when they come in here, when they when they know Wolf Den li- podcast, when they know Wolf Den <laughs> podcast is live every single Tuesday at 8 p.m., they love coming in at 8 p.m. and seeing four minute long ads before they can finally see the show and missing out on, on four minutes of, uh, of, of Wolf Den podcast. Uh, Sources speaking to Bloomberg state Amazon is considering these changes to improve Twitch's sustainability. Amazon has been primarily concerned with growth ever since ever since capitalism was invented and they've been a public company. That's when Uh, they've been concerned with growth ever since purchasing Twitch back in 2014. But now that focus is changing. Amazon wants Twitch to be a moneymaker and is considering proposals that would help the tech giant better monetize the world's largest streaming platform. Is it the world's largest streaming platform? That seems wrong. Streaming, yes. Well, streaming, because YouTube is still considered uh, video on demand. Okay. Okay. I still don't believe it. Like, like I know that YouTube doesn't... I know that Twitch has more live streams, but Twitch... Ha- I mean, yeah. no, I know that Twitch has more live streams, but YouTube has bigger live streams. I, I think they mean they probably mean like largest in a sense that, you know, the sheer number of people who are live streaming as opposed okay. to on YouTube. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, do they actually yeah. pull more numbers than all of YouTube's live streams, or do they have just more live streamers? <laughs> like, probably, probably have more live streamers. What is the, the exact li- metric there? I I I don't know, man. Maybe maybe this article will tell us. <laughs> True. One of the proposals under consideration is for partnered streamers to take a 20% pay cut. Twitch currently offers 70% revenue share of paid channel subscriptions with its top partners, but that would drop to 50 if the proposal is approved. To offset this loss in revenue, streamers would be released from their exclusivity agreements (laughs) so they could start streaming on YouTube and Facebook. Let's talk about that. So, Will, we are partnered (laughs) here on Twitch. We became yes. partnered through some weird sort of technicality. Uh, we don't deserve this partnership. <laughs> uh, most people have to go through hoops to get partnered. Uh, we became partnered because we wanted to be, uh, because they wanted us to be part of this weird experiment. Before YouTube premieres happened, they wanted us to premiere our videos on Twitch first. I uh, remember that. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, they paid us to be part of that program and they just immediately partnered us to be part of that program. Um, because yeah. of that partnership agreement, we never had exclusivity. They don't want us to stream on YouTube and Twitch at the same time, but we have always been allowed to stream to YouTube if we wanted to, because we came from YouTube. And we also had a podcast that was live on YouTube at the time. Uh, I streamed yes. on YouTube every Sunday at that time. So, uh, I was still able to do that. Um, that program failed miserably and they don't have really premieres on Twitch anymore. Um, but at the time we only had like 20 viewers, like concurrently on Twitch. Uh, now we have, right now we have 255. So we would have like two years ago, we would have met the requirements for partnership. Um, but we were partnered way earlier than we should have been because, uh, because they wanted us to be part of that program. Twitch doesn't really do this 70, this 30, 70 pay cut or, or pay split. They don't really do that with anybody that like some of the top creators from a long time ago have that cut. They've been kind of like, uh, uh, grandfathered into that, that cut. Um, 
my understanding is almost all of the st partnered streamers on Twitch are a 50-50 split, even a lot of the top creators. Um, but I guess there are some big money makers on there that have a 70-30 yeah. split that they're trying to maybe uh, change. They're trying to fix that because they're realizing that they're losing a lot of money. Um, Twitch has been notoriously uh, uh, shitty with this exclusivity clause. They snipe out partners super quick if they uh, stream on a different platform. Um, and they've been getting less shitty about it. Remember when Ninja switched platforms? Yes, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna bring up uh, when Ninja switched over to Mixer, Microsoft's um, very successful streaming service. Mm -hmm. um, when he switched over, what did Twitch redirected his channel to like porn or something? So, so no, it was something uh, like that. Tw Ninja was the biggest streamer on Twitch, and then yes. when he was at his peak, he got bought out by Mixer and switched to Mixer. So there was still a lot of traffic going to Ninja's URL, you know, twitch.tv slash Ninja. So Twitch decided, hey, while you're here, why don't you check out some other great streamers? And they had like a, they kind of made it a landing page for other streamers who were top of their respective categories. Mm -hmm. And one of those streamers just happened to be straight up porn. Like there's just porn yeah. on just algorithmically yeah. something messed up and somebody was watching porn. So that became the highest viewed in that category. And it showed up on, on Ninja's page. It was a Twitch did a really passive aggressive. I don't think it was passive aggressive. I think it was aggressive aggressive. Oh, it, was, it was aggressive as hell. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really weird, like, like petty Twitch is very petty. It's run by a bunch of fucking like college kids who have who haven't grown up at all they, they they did this weird petty thing where they were like ninja moved let's just delete his whole page and redirect it to other streamers or something that they would never ever do to anybody else um super shitty and weird thing to do and they do shitty and weird things like that to all the other streamers that have left to other platforms as well uh, they they like straight up ban them from twitch they'll they, they'll immediately remove their partnership um They've gotten better at it now. Since like Ludwig switched platforms, like they were nice to him. They were nice to Tim the Tatman when he switched platforms. But in the beginning, they were really weird and and petty about it. Um, so the fact that they're allowing streamers to be able to stream on other platforms is kind of insane. It's like it's it, it's unprecedented for for Twitch to right. do that. Especially because they're going to lose a lot of money when they do that. <laughs> like a lot of people are just going to straight up move to YouTube. Yeah, they're, they're going to realize that they don't need Twitch at all for any for any of this. Um, anyway, more to this article. Uh, partner streamers will also be offered a revenue sharing for ads. Currently, Twitch offers streamers a flat rate for running a number of ads. During their live streams, revenue sharing on ads could be a potentially lucrative new source of income provided a streamer's channel is large enough to entice advertisers. We don't run ads here ever because it's a little annoying to hit that button. And also it, it benefits us not at all. There's zero incentive. We get no money from, from Twitch ads. Uh, there are ads when you click into the, uh, the Twitch stream. Like if you click in, you're going to get an ad, but, um, that is, to my knowledge, out of our control. I don't think I can turn those off. Um, anyway, uh, ads aren't exactly the preferred method for a Twitch stream monetization as they're tricky to implement during a live stream. Some streamers have gotten good at throwing on an ad every once in a while, but game streamers often simply have their ads timed to go at certain intervals since they're more focused on playing. This can result in some viewers missing out on key gameplay moments or key podcast moments, guys. Another proposal being considered is a tiered revenue sharing structure where partners would have to reach certain criteria for more revenue. <laughs> All these proposals are being considered and nothing has been finalized. Twitch declined to comment. Okay, let's talk about ads. Um, on YouTube, uh, there are mid-roll ads. It happens. Yes. YouTube uh, did a lot of research and they decided uh, nobody cares if there's mid-roll ads. Uh, you might say you care, but you're still going to watch the video anyway. Like you're not going to click off. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they they don't impact viewership, but they add money to our wallets. So uh, they basically told uh, content creators like put mid roll ads in. Uh, it only helps everybody, and it only helps everybody involved except for the viewer. <laughs> but they don't care anyway. Um, right. It's not the same on Twitch. Um, the way it works on YouTube is I think within a minute of, I think you will only get an ad if you didn't, if you watch an ad, you are basically free from ads for a whole minute while you're on the platform. On Twitch, if you're clicking around, you'll get ads every single new stream that you click on. And there's no way around that unless you have Twitch Turbo, which I have because it's 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 like YouTube Premium. You don't get any ads. Or you're subscribed to that channel. So if you subscribe to youtube.com slash Wolfden, even with a Prime subscription, you don't get ads. Um, so that's a great way to get around ads. Or, I mean, there's also ad block. I don't like ad block. I think ad block is like, is like stealing because like, you know, we do this shit for free right. and we get yeah. paid through advertising. Um... Anyway, don't want to say anything else about ads. Oh yeah, sometimes, so there's streamers who have contracts with Twitch. They get paid to not leave Twitch, to stay on Twitch. Um, Mm -hmm. Most of them have clauses where they have to do ads every hour. And uh, a lot of them do it automatically. But if you don't, if you do it automatically, you might the, the 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 friggin' viewers might miss key moments of the stream. So some people do it manually. They just are contractually obligated to do ads every single hour. And the reason they do that is because uh, advertisers need a reason to want to pay Twitch a bunch of money to advertise on their platform. Right. So uh, for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't have a problem securing advertising. Twitch has a huge problem. I've seen other people suggest that Twitch do something like non-invasive ads. Like on YouTube, there's a little ad at the bottom of the screen sometimes. Mm-hmm. Non-invasive. It's just there. It doesn't impede whatever you're watching. It's just a little thing on the bottom. There's also a little thing on the side sometimes. It's a little, a little like inline advertisement. I yeah, like a why. banner ad. Yeah. yeah, or put one in the chat. Just like a little banner ad that just goes away after like five seconds. Yeah. You don't miss anything. It's just there. It's not obtrusive. Not a big deal. I don't understand why I don't just do something like that. Or like a picture in picture. Like, like what the hell? Like it shouldn't be a, a hard at all. Anyway, uh, last thing. Twitch has been struggling to retain talent in years with big names like Dr. Lupo, Tim the Tatman, and Ludwig, and uh, Saikuno as of yesterday. Uh Twitch is also struggling with misinformation and racist hate raids, which require greater investment in moderation tools. On the other hand, some streamers are sticking with Twitch after receiving lucrative deals. So Twitch is clearly willing to throw serious cash to retain at at least some of the top creators. Also, there's some creators that are very big who don't have deals at all. They just feel like they would make more on Twitch, which is fine. Um... So anyway, uh, what about our personal experiences, Will? Will, how? Ha- what's the? So, Will, you're not a streamer. You're no, just he- no, you, you, can't. You're a streamer by association because you are here once I, a week. I like to, I like to prefer the term podcaster mm-hmm. because it's not about like, you know, how we're doing it. It's about what we're doing. You know, we True. are we are putting on a podcast. It just happens to be, uh, streaming as right. it were. Right. So. so, so. We used to do this podcast on YouTube, and then somewhere yes. along the way, uh, we moved it over to Twitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how has your experience been with that transition? Well, I've been a lot more hands-off mm-hmm. since we've moved over to Twitch. Um, and like I ha- you know, I don't really spend a lot of time on Twitch as a whole. I do spend more time on YouTube, so I'm more used to that ecosystem and like their terms and whatnot um but i can tell you uh from my experience on doing this on youtube it was a fairly complicated procedure going live and i think yes Mm -hmm. uh and i think i think part of the reason why people prefer doing it on twitch go you know live streaming is because they found a way to make it much simpler and correct me if i'm wrong no you're Um, right 
that's why Twitch has become, you know, that's why this article says Twitch is the the leading platform for live streaming. It may not have the biggest, but it certainly has the most. The problem is when you're number one, sometimes you think you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yes. And something like this, completely re rewriting the, the rev share model, um, is one of those things that uh, is to be something to be concerned about. <laughs> Yeah, I remember back in the day, Twitch used to be the cool kids on the block, and yes. uh, everybody treated them like the cool kids on the block. And they, the, even the Twitch staff, were huge assholes to like mm -hmm. everybody around them who weren't like the top streamers. Um, some of them got uh, got fired during the whole like uh, 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 the the whole content creator Me Too movement that happened like a few week uh, a few years ago which which good yeah. fucking riddance they were pieces of shit anyway um and i saw some of that stuff ha going down when it was going down uh it should the, it, twitch bred this like weird sort of like like uh like fraternity atmosphere that was just like not fucking cool um and yeah, they were like the cool kids on the block. So at the time, they were able to get away with whatever they wanted. And now people are finally realizing like, hey, maybe they really aren't like worth it at all. So so, like what you were saying, YouTube's one of YouTube's major problems with streaming is that it is a little needlessly difficult to just go live. Um, mm -hmm. on, on Twitch, it's as easy as hitting the start streaming button and then you, it's just live. You're just there. On YouTube, there's a version of that, but it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like, each, every time you go live, it's a separate video that goes up. So there's there's YouTube.com slash live slash Wolfden, I think, or something like that. And like, you can go live there, but then it, it if it gets broken out afterwards, it does it in like a weird way. Or you can make your own unique link or video uh, and go live that way. But some people might not see it unless you schedule it beforehand and then when you go live you have to then click go live on youtube so you can't just do it in your streaming software it is a bit of a mess in that regard um but once you get used to it and get past that a lot of people think that the viewing experience is a lot different on youtube personally really the only other streamer that i watch is like tim the tab man and he, mm -hmm. he moved from Twitch to YouTube. And when he moved to YouTube, it didn't make a fucking difference to me. <laughs> it was exactly the same. So I think people are just averse to change. Just right. It looks different. So it's like, oh, no. Yeah. But to be fair, I don't really engage in chat, especially if a streamer is that big. There's nothing going on. There's nothing you could do in chat, you know? Right. Um. But yeah, as far, I mean, as, far as the viewing experience... It might have even been better because I, the YouTube player is great and you can rewind and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for the chat, I don't know. And moderation tools, probably not as good in, on YouTube. From what I've seen, like YouTube live streaming versus Twitch live streaming, Twitch live se streaming seems to just the general overall mentality is a lot more interactive. Like live streamers on Twitch will make a conscious effort to... Uh, engage with the chat right. in some form or another whereas live streaming on youtube it's more like you know the audience is watching the show and reacting to it but the the people putting on the show are just putting on the show they're not really engaging with the audience in any yeah. in any sort of level like like they do on twitch YouTube made a lot of changes throughout the years uh, that we saw when we were streaming on YouTube, like like yeah. super chats. Super chats were a great way for uh, for the chat to be involved. You, know, you pay a yes. dollar, and then something comes up, and we see it, and then we can react to it in real time. Um, and Twitch has similar stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that wasn't in this article is I think Twitch is thinking about getting rid of bits and making it more like super chats. So it makes more sense uh, yeah. to people. And, and I think that that's probably a good idea. Um, Pork chop in the chat says also a factor. I think Bob mentioned was of people who were subscribed only for the game videos and not the podcast. They wouldn't bother watching something they didn't subscribe for 
unfortunately, Bob had to deal with drop in revenue because of that. That I didn't mention this at all. The whole reason we stopped streaming on YouTube entirely is because uh, of notification fatigue. Yes. We want people to get the notification and to click on the notifications and to watch the whole video for the most important videos that we have. The most important videos we have are the ones that you people want to see. You know? So if 1% of you are watching the podcast, but 99% of you are watching the main game videos, then having a then giving a notification to all 100% of people for a podcast is 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 suicide. It's bad because YouTube's going to be like, oh, I guess people aren't interested in Wolf Den's notifications anymore. And then it's going to start serving our notifications less to people. So that's why we moved to Twitch at all is because we, we just needed to clear the channel of anything that wasn't uh, a banger every every time, you know? Yeah. Um, and this is a problem that is plaguing YouTube streamers right now. Uh it's the opposite problem. People like Tim the Tatman and Ludwig, they have YouTube content. They have con they have regular videos on YouTube that they have. Um, but people don't want to see those. They want to see the live streams. So they get a notification for the live streams and they get a notification for the YouTube videos. So that's a, a problem there. Yeah. We have the opposite problem. And I think when they fix that problem for the big streamers, it will also be fixed for us. So... If there's a way to separate those notifications or have a separate tab for live streaming that's a separate notification, I think it would be a no-brainer for us to go back and start streaming on YouTube again because that's where our biggest audience is and it's almost no difference to us what platform we're streaming on. We just want to reach the most people we can and we already have a huge audience on YouTube, so it would make way more sense to just stream on YouTube if we could separate those notifications, but unfortunately it's just not set up that way right now. Um, yeah, we have no ties to Twitch. We'll stream wherever we want. I think the yeah. Twitch culture has been toxic for a long time. I fucking have my weird issues with them. Um, so I, I'd be ready to move in a heartbeat, but uh, also I should mention, I did a test once, uh, like just about a month or two ago. I decided uh, I was just going to stream to youtube.com slash wolfdenclips where we post the clips videos of the gameplay. I decided I'm just going to do a random stream over here and just see what happens. And we had almost the same viewership. It was really? down like a little bit, but like it, for what it was, like I could totally just do that. Like if mm -hmm. Twitch ever decided to ban me for some stupid reason, I would have no. I would be totally fine just streaming on on the sep the second YouTube channel. Yeah, you know. So there's just really they, uh, Twitch is completely shooting themselves in the foot. There's really no reason why everybody shouldn't just move to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but it makes sense. It makes more sense for us because we're from YouTube. You know, we get our biggest audiences over there. Um, anyway, what else does the chat have to say? I'll watch Macho Nacho live stream on YouTube, and it's a generally pleasant viewing experience. I know a lot of people, they trash the viewing experience on YouTube. I really just think that it's, uh, they just, they just don't like change. So people are like, the theater mode's bad. It's like, no, it's it just, just yeah. no, it's not. Can we confirm if you can gift subs on YouTube? I heard that they're implementing it. Oh, yeah, I think uh, there's something like that. Uh, another thing that YouTube's doing, uh, they announced it today. Uh, you can now raid other YouTubers. It's called a live redirect. There you go. <laughs> so just like oh, how we... That tweet is. Yeah. So just like how we raid uh, people, like when we're done with the, with, with the podcast... You can now do that same thing on YouTube, which is incredible because uh, YouTube has a YouTube live streaming has a issue with uh, uh, discoverability because I mean, how do you find a YouTube live stream? It's very hard. Yeah. Um, 
now you can find other live streamers from other live streamers. Live streamers can direct you to a different live streamer. Um, they stole AJ and Parker's branding. Yeah, it's literally, that's their YouTube channel name is Redirect, and that's the name of this thing. Yeah. Uh, the Raidy needs to subscribe to the Raiders channel already. No, that's, uh, you can turn, that's a setting. So it sounds a lot more complicated than it is because there's a lot of weird parameters and like exceptions. Uh, if you have your channel set so that people can see who you're subscribed to, then you can be rated by anybody and you can rate anybody else who has that same thing done. That's what my interpretation was. Right. Uh, allow live redirects from channels I subscribe to. This lets any channel redirect to you so long as you're subscribed to their channel. Your, your, note your channel subscriptions must be set to public. Oh, wait. No, you're right. I'm wrong. Uh, to make sure live redirect is used responsibly, we have two options in the YouTube studio setting. Oh no, you're right. I'm wrong. You have to be subscribed to the channel in order for them to redirect to you. That sucks. Never mind. This is a stupid system. <laughs> Needlessly complicated for no reason. Uh, I guess they're trying to like get around bullying, but like do do. I, I don't think that's how hate raids work. Like hate raids, usually like the guy who hates you is live and they just tell everybody yeah. to go over there. It's not usually like that type of a hate raid. That's weird. That's a weird. Yeah. And you should moderate after the fact anyway. You should moderate. You sh if, they if somebody does a hate raid in that way, you should report them after the fact that they should get banned that way. Uh... Yeah, I'm disappointed by that. Oh, well, baby steps. <laughs> um, I was reading the rest of the thing. Uh, YouTube should give its premium users something similar to Prime, even if it's just some bits or a dollar. They should... Yeah, if you have YouTube... Uh, premium you should get a free subscription a yeah free, a free that's, membership that's like the easiest thing easiest thing to do and the membership should give you no ads on that person's channel just like how how subscriptions work on twitch there's no reason not to do that mm -hmm. another thing i wanted to say uh twitch twitch seems like it needs more revenue from from its current subscribers and 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 uh it's current streamers or whatever. Just give mm -hmm. more people a reason to subscribe. Yeah. Just just give streamers tools to give fans more of a reason to subscribe, and that and then you'll have more revenue. And I think YouTube f crushes it in that in that respect. Um, YouTube started, and they were like. Here you go, uh, creators. 50-50 split. You help us get the eyeballs. We'll give you the tools to get those eyeballs, and we'll work together to do that. Twitch is like, give me all of your money. It's a privilege to be around us. <laughs> and it's shooting them in the foot. Everybody wants to leave yeah. now because fuck them. So uh, that's what I have to say about Twitch. I'm very uh, passionate about this because uh, I have a lot of hate in my heart. <laughs> uh, have you tried dual streaming to twitch and youtube you can do that since they will be lifting the exclusivity deal i don't know if that's part of the exclusivity deal that they're going to be lifting because that's something that they've never like we were one of the few that didn't have an exclusivity deal but they still didn't want us to dual stream there's then there was no like wording about like dual streaming specifically they just said that you can also stream on another platform. You know, right. not that you can stream on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Well, it's, it said the exclusivity was being lifted. So I can understand where that would make people think that you could dual stream. But yeah. I, I think that I wouldn't be surprised if when this is all said and done, 
they still don't allow dual streaming for, for partners for partners right um anyway I hate Twitch as well, but I promise you as an active chat person in chat, the viewership experience on YouTube is significantly worse. I think you're insane. I think that they're <laughs> e exactly the same. I mean, again, I don't use the chat as much as you do. Um, but hey, man, you could rewind. And like that should, yeah. that should friggin, uh, that should like, you know, already make the experience leagues beyond what it is on twitch you can like kind of rewind on twitch but it's not the same at all anyway. i would just like to point out sorry no no please point it out i would just like to point out that amazon acquired twitch in august of 2014 and a few months earlier than that in April of 2014, Amazon acquired Comixology. <laughs> and so I think right around now is be a good time for Amazon to completely ruin Twitch. Just save them a buck or two. Because it's what they did with Comixology. Mm -hmm. So I would not be surprised if they implement these, uh, these rev share changes and a lot of other changes that are make the experience worse for everybody but you know at least amazon is amazon doesn't have to run something that's marginally more expensive than what they currently do <laughs> i think that uh twitch has gotten worse through the years primarily because amazon pretended like they didn't exist aside from giving them the amazon prime subscription which right. might that might go away too if they're if they're hemorrhaging money that might get, and that would be a huge uh pain point for a lot of streamers yeah um but yeah no recent like in the past year i think amazon's starting to crack down i think part yeah. of what made amazon even aware that twitch was a problem was when the copyright stuff was going on when the big streamers started just watching naruto yeah for, for, out of like protest or or curiosity i don't know what the hell they were doing yeah but uh that probably got bezos's uh, uh attention and now they're like wait something's up here we need to get more money yeah. out of them or else they're not worth having around they're going to be a huge uh, uh problem for us if they keep uh getting us in legal trouble yeah Uh, anyway, uh, where's the notifications? We got Lizdrin, thanks for the 45 months. We got Sea Soul, thank you for the 19 months. We got Rock and Val, thanks for the 22 months. Meep, hello, guys. Help, you're doing well. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Rock and Val. I thank appreciate you. it. Spankwise, thanks for gifting us up. So, like, I don't know, like, this, like, we definitely didn't see as many channel memberships on YouTube as we did sponsor as we do, you know, uh, subscribers here. Right. But uh, super chats were huge. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if the revenue was was different. Honestly, I don't know. There's a there's uh, who knows what's going to end up happening. Yeah, we we won't really know until. This stuff goes from being, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, concept Penis. to implementation, basically. Uh. Right now, this is all speculation. Um, until it actually happens, we won't really know how this will affect. You know, it'll definitely affect the the streamers, but right. you know, in the long run, that could affect the audience as well. So if the streamers are not having a good time, then the audience is not going to have a good time. Right. I should mention that around like 2019, I think, I got an offer from YouTube. Uh, not YouTube. No, I got an offer from Facebook. <laughs> Much worse. Yes. <laughs> um, that was when YouTube, uh, Facebook was poaching people. Uh, the offer was for me to stream. I don't even know what they were, what money they were offering. I didn't even get to that point yet. Uh, but I had to stream 80 hours a month. 
at the time I was streaming 20. So I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. And then they stopped talking to me. I was like, I can't do that. I only streamed 20 hours. And they're like, okay, well, you're not who Goodbye. we want to talk to. And I was yeah. like, why did you, you called me? I didn't, you <laughs> should have done your research before you were about to offer me money. <laughs> uh, McRib King says, Bob, I'm ride or die. I will follow you anywhere, my dude. I appreciate that, but I don't think I would ever ask you to follow me to Facebook. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, a man's got to know his limitations. Yeah, man. I, 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 I don't think I ever would have taken that deal. Actually, you know what? I tried to get the podcast to be on Facebook. I was like, just take the podcast. We'll, we'll do that. I think fuck we it. could submit the podcast like, and it would just be there on oh, yeah. facebook they facebook has like a big they're shooting for podcasts now well i mean everybody is mm -hmm. so anyway jay cannon with five thousand bits oh will do you ever see a future where amazon would own dc comics distribution it would increase comicsology sub counts they could fix the issues diamond uh, I, I think that last sentence is incomplete. Um, Diamond, of course, is the distributor of like 95% of all physical comics around the world. DC hasn't actually used them since 2020. DC uses their own distributor for physical comics. Uh, I don't see a world where Amazon uh, gets control of DC Comics distribution. I see a world where the current owners of Warner Brothers shuts down DC Comics <laughs> and just licenses the characters out to like IDW or something. And by the characters, I mean just Batman. Because <laughs> he's the only one who makes money for them. So, no, the world I envision is much bleaker. Because <laughs> my whole life is a dark room. Uh, let's talk about Nintendo Switch Sports. Yes. Will, you haven't uh, played it. I have not, but I've spent many an hour in Wii Sports, so I imagine it's exactly the same. I gotta tell you. It's pretty much exactly the same. The nice. biggest difference is there's online, and the online is fun as hell. Yeah. It's great yelling at a nine-year-old from the other side of the screen, <laughs> whooping their ass in Chumbara. That's another thing. Yeah, we didn't have Chumbara back in the day. That was, yeah. a, that was a resort, a Wii Sports resort thing, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. So you got your Chumbara. You got your soccer you got your bowling, and then you have three different versions of tennis. Um, I only ever play bowling in Chambara, and I think it's sick. For $40, I, it's, not, it's not bad. I also like playing online. You unlock uh, certain... Uh, like things you unlock, like uh, like like little trinkets for your guy. You can like have right. a new outfit. You can put on a little cute little hat. Uh, it's great. Uh, and uh, there's there's already like a toxic culture in we uh, Nintendo Switch Sports where you can like spam emotes. Like I could just keep spamming the, yeah. cry, the crying emote every time I win. Like as like oh, a, as fun. like a tea bag. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, it popped my elbow out of the socket and my shoulder. Oh Friggin God! Yeah, my 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 weak old joints weren't prepared for this. Um, but it's fun. It also just so happens to be bashing people's TVs. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Nintendo uh, Switch Sports is predictably leading to smashed TVs over after over a decade. The Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo, the Nintendo Sports series has returned with Switch Sports, the follow-up to 2006. Wii Sports. The newest sports simulation game from Nintendo comes with plenty of fan favorite mini games such as bowling, tennis, and more. However, it also comes with a major problem long since forgotten busted television screams. You remember that, Will? I, I remember. I mean, not us, but the internet was a flooded with broken television screen tales of broken TV screens. We have come very close, though. I have come very close to busting a TV screen with a Wiimote. Now, I will say that a Joy-Con, much tinier than a Wiimote. Yes. 
much tinier, uh, much much lighter. But a uh, but a uh, Joy-Con can still pierce a TV screen if if it yeah. needs to. Despite Nintendo Switch Sports releasing less than a week ago, players are already reporting television casualties resulting from accidentally flinging their Joy-Cons, according to Kotaku. While the lightweight controllers uh, certainly pack less of a punch than the Wii Motes, uh, which shattered more than a few screens with the help of Wii Sports back in 2000, in the 2000s, the colorful contraptions have already proven they can just as le- they can be just as lethal. Just watch the Twitch streamer below. Uh, this is 63 man, and he is just full sending that Joy-Con right into his TV. Uh, another Twitch streamer, Northern Lion, who is fantastic, also launched his Joy-Con at his television screen uh, on stream uh, while playing Switch Sports this past week. While neither of these instances are quite as dramatic or hilarious as the Switch Sports Home Shopping Network incident of 2009, you got to admit they, they're they still pretty amusing. What is the Switch Sports Home? Oh. It's when they did it on the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> are you serious? I don't remember that. Yeah. yeah. Am I allowed to show this? I remember that. When does it happen? Uh, I don't know. But I've seen this clip before. Oh, they're like advertising those stupid. Oh, the, yeah. The hardware shovelware. Yeah. He's got like a tennis racket attachment yeah. on, on the Switch. $329? Oh, it's for the whole thing. Yes. It's like this, okay. the Switch with Wii Sports and 15 accessories. That's just stupid. That is a ripoff. <laughs> so the Switch at the time was $300, though. No, the Switch is on. Oh, the Switch. Yes, the Wii. Oh, no, was no, no. I'm sorry. The Wii was. The Wii launched at 250, and it came bundled with Wii Sports. So right. they're upcharging you. What is that? Fifty. Uh, Eighty dollars. That's an eighty dollar upcharge for fifteen accessories. There he goes. He just did it. I thought the Switch. I thought the Wii was three hundred dollars. No, it was, was uh, it, 250 Was the Wii U $300? Yes. Um, what a dummy. Yeah. Take uh, that, honky cat. Skate Beard says, reminds me of playing VR chat, uh, VR in that antique store. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sense of humor, too, and it's live TV, so sometimes we're surprised when things don't work out when the way they're supposed to. HSN Shopping Diva. That's what the Home Shopping Network said about their own yeah. video. Uh, interesting. Uh, anyway. Whoa. Oh, this is Northern Lion. I'm sorry. I guess he threw it. So the, the, the game tells you multiple times, for the love of God, put the <laughs> wrist strap on, you know? Yeah. And it comes with a wrist strap. The Joy Cons. <laughs> the Joy Cons come with a wrist strap, yes. Yeah. Um, the game itself, if you get it physical, it comes with a leg strap, which I still don't know what it's for. It's for a soccer. mini game. No, it's for a mini game in soccer that I still have no idea how to access. Oh, because that's that's DLC. That's coming later. Are you serious? I can't even use the, the leg strap yet. Yeah, some modes are coming later. My God. Yeah. So the wrist strap for the Joy-Con is part of that whole little attachment thing that you put, they slide onto the side of the Joy-Con that I'm sure everybody has lost by now. Yeah. Um, I'm still throwing caution to the wind. I'm still going to friggin' use my uh, play in Nintendo Switch Sports without the strap. I don't care. Also, uh, I'm using, I use the Boxy Pixel Joy-Con, which are solid aluminum. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill somebody if they're near me while yeah. I'm playing that game. Um, leg strap is for local only mode. Huh? Soccer penalty kickoff one player mode only. So so, can I just do the penalty kickoff mode, or is that just like a thing that happens in the game that I have to go run and put on my leg strap? At launch, the leg strap will only work for soccer shootout mode, but an update launching sometime this summer will add functionality to use the leg strap for soccer matches. That's another problem with Nintendo Switch Sports. Uh, 
We're getting golf eventually. And one yes. other game. One other game, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't remember the other game either. Is the other game the soccer penalty thing? Um, I think No, I think it's in addition to that. Golf is... I, I was hoping for some golf. Golf was my jam on Nintendo Switch Sports. Yeah. Uh, there is a video on YouTube.com slash Wolfden. You, I think you could probably find it if you sort by oldest. Uh, yeah. it's, a play, it's a let's play of me and Will playing uh, Wii Golf. It's three episodes long. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of them has zero comments. Um, nice. Anyway, there's data miners who found dodgeball and bas and basketball. Oh, dodgeball sounds that sick. would be interesting. Dodgeball sounds sick. Yeah, uh, I'm having a, like I said, I'm having a great time with uh, bowling and uh, uh, chambara. I like the bowling mode that puts obstacles in the way. I just don't know how to enable that for online play. Like, how do I choose that when I want to play online? Right. Um. Anyway, so I think it's I think it's worth the forty bucks if you buy it digitally. Physical fifty, it, it's I don't think it's worth it because you're just getting the leg strap. Um, right. But yeah, for forty bucks, I think it's way. I think it definitely is a 40 it's forty dollars worth of fun. Um you can you can o- you can't you can only do it in a friend room if you if you do uh the, the obstacles. That sucks because I like that mode. It it's like bowling's fun, but like once you figure out where you need to throw the ball, like it's boring, you know? Like yeah. throwing the obstacles in the way makes it more fun again. It adds skill back to it, I think. Right. Because yeah, everybody everybody always says, yo, I love Wii Sports. I'm so good at bowling. <laughs> I've never met anybody who said that they're bad at bowling in Wii Sports. Right. Everybody's fucking good at bowling. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah. It's so impressive. <laughs> you found the you found the spot that you the, the little twist that you do. Yeah, you know how to put spin on the ball. Wake me up when they add esports to it. There is a there is a ranked mode. There you go. If you play it enough, you get into the ranked mode, and then it starts ranking your online. Can you imagine like this being in the next esports sensation? Oh, I'm down. I'll it's fuck like, up everybody in Jambara. It's like what? What are the big esports games? Like Street Fighter, uh, Call of Duty, Switch Sports. There's Rocket League es- esports, and soccer is just Rocket League with people. True. Very true. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, what's this about S- PlayStation requiring demos? Uh, yeah, time game trials are now a requirement for some PlayStation developers. Uh, Sony has begun communicating with developers about its plans. Why did it shoot back up to the ending? Sony has begun communicating with developers for about plans for its timed game trials for PlayStation Plus premium subscribers. According to sources speaking to game developer, developers working on games that have a wholesale cost of $34 or higher, that's 33 euros in Europe or 4,000 yen in Japan, are now required to create time-limited game trials for their games. These trial versions must be at least two hours long. Games that cost lower than those amounts are not required to create time-limited trials according to the new policy. The plan follows Sony's announcement for expanding subscription options for PlayStation Plus. Many developers were informed about the new policy via an update to Sony's developer portal. Our sources indicated they have not received any other communication about this change. The good news is these requirements are not retroactive and do not apply to upcoming PlayStation VR titles. The less than great news is that if you're a developer planning to release on the PlayStation Store in the future, you now need to budget time and resources to create these new time trials. There is some flexibility as part of of Sony's policy. 
Developers have up to three months after their game launches on the PlayStation Store to release their time trial. Trials are also only required to be available to PlayStation Plus premium users for at least 12 months. Sony is also open to releasing custom game demos instead of time-limited game trials, but these will only be approved on a case-by-case -case basis. Developers are also still free to publish free weekends, game trials, or custom demos that can be accessed to all PlayStation users. The new policy seems to be a mixed bag for all developers planning to release on PlayStation. On the one hand, larger publishers like Activision Blizzard, 2K Games, or Sony's in-house studios will likely have the resources needed to create these time-limited trials uh, and stand to benefit from the PlayStation Plus premium subscriptions. On the other hand, if your game is hovering just over the $34 wholesale price point, you're probably working with fewer resources than your uh, competitors, and two hours may be a significant chunk of your game's content. Savvy developers can maximize those trials with opportunities to acquire new players, but with no promises of payout at the end, it could risk a, a lot of work being done for limited payoff. Game demos have had a bit of a resurgence in the last few years, with, uh, from prologues released on Steam to limited time demos offered during events like Summer's Game Festival or Valve's seasonal Steam, Steam Games Festival, it's interesting to see Sony revive them as a tier for relatively high rolling subscribers. Sony did not respond to requests for comment about its new policy at the time of publication. Okay, so I think we heard about this. I think we knew that um, Sony was going to have game demos as part of their PlayStation Plus Premium. I had no idea they were going to put that on developers. I thought that yeah. would be one of those like, hey, you can try the game and we'll just put a timer yeah, like, on it. Yeah, no. Uh, it, well, it, you don't. the developers don't have to specifically create a, a game-specific demo, but it's going to fall on them to allocate a two-hour chunk of the game to be playable uh to customers basically yeah that not, means that not, they have yeah. to make the demo <laughs> yeah and a lot of reasons why demos fell out of favor many years ago with developers mostly because there was no guarantee that people would go and actually buy the game based on their experience with the demo and that and that sucks for us because demos are really a better indicator of how good a game is going to be than a trailer is. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, a big problem with demos is you you load the demo with the best part of the game when the rest of your game is garbage. Right. So, uh, uh, Tech Niner says two hours is a lot. I guess from now on, indie games will be thirty dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. So this particularly says. If a game costs more than thirty-four dollars, then it needs a demo. Yes. So you mean um, some games are going to be thirty-three dollars just so that they don't, yeah. they don't have to have a two-hour demo? But I but get I, what he's saying. Like, sorry, I'll, go ahead. I'll also say that two hours. A lot of people in the chat are saying two hours is a hefty demo. There are a lot of games on the Switch eShop with demos that are around two hours long. So like two yeah. hours sounds like a lot, but there are a lot of demo. Like Hyrule Warriors demo is two hours. The Triangle Strategy demo. Oh was yeah, that's like long as hell. Yeah, I was gonna say Triangle Strategy. I was playing Curse to Golf last night. That game, I still haven't beaten the demo. Like it's a very long yeah. demo. So, and but it would be interesting because yeah, it, it, this is a requirement for games uh, that cost at least thirty four dollars wholesale. Um, a game like Call of Duty, for example, is only like six hours long. So you're getting like a <laughs> third of the game. That's true. That's a good point. For free. That also does it like, like this article mentions, like smaller studios, like, you know, mid-tier studios or even indie studios that are selling their game at a higher price point that may only be like two hours long. There's a very real possibility that you can beat the game within the span of the demo for free. And that's not a good deal for those two. No, that's bad. That's very bad too. Yeah. Uh, I hope they get some money for like people downloading the demo. Yeah. Well, uh, they're part. It's part of the PlayStation Plus Premium subscription. So theoretically, the money you uh, collected from Premium will go to those developers. Well, well how much they're going to get, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know because it's just a demo. So we yeah. don't know. We don't know if they're going to allocate money at all. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Mimi Meme says, Will read the wholesale price of the game, so not the yes. retail price. So, yes. but what uh, is the, the whole the wholesale price of a game? Is a is almost full price, isn't it? Isn't it like if it's game sixty dollars, is the wholesale price like over fifty? I think so. It's like really high. Like there's there's yeah. no like margin for for physical there's game barely sales margin or, even, for or digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why that's why mom and pop game stores don't exist unless they sell retro and old stuff. And that's why GameStop yeah. was selling used shit because there's just no market for having a store that just sells video games. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I hope there's a clause in there for game length because uh, if a game is freaking three hours and you're playing yeah. two of it for free, I don't know. That's weird. Uh, yeah. Uh. I, yeah. It's again. It's weird that they're putting the onus on the developers to do yeah. a, a two hour demo because I mean, that's work that that's work that they have yeah. to do. Why are they going to want to be yeah. on Sony's platform? I mean, one of the things that you hear about, uh, E3 a lot is, uh, the rush to get that vertical slice, which is basically a demo specifically made for trade shows that shows off the best parts of the game. Mm-hmm. A lot of studios spend a lot of time and money creating those vertical slices to look as immaculate as possible. But because they spend so much time and money creating those vertical slices, they don't have enough resources to put back into the game proper. And the game proper suffers for it. The most famous example from the last few years is Aliens Colonial Marines, (laughs) where had a very impressive hands-off vertical slice. Uh, But when you actually got the game, the game, the graphics looked significantly worse and the gameplay was like completely borked. Yeah. So that's uh, what we're saying. Like all the time and resources that could just go into making the game, they now have to also allocate to making another game, basically. Right. Another thing is uh if <laughs> like I mean this only really happens for pre release stuff, but if a game is forced to have a demo for a two hour chunk, it's probably just gonna be the finished game. And yeah. uh that means that people can data mine from the two hour chunk, you know? Yeah. And they could just figure out what's in the game and whatever. Yeah. Uh Andy List says if a game is three hours long, it shouldn't be thirty five dollars. That's a good point. <laughs> You're a tro. Uh, what's a what's a game be- that's that's three hours that is worth a lot of money though? What's a game that I've had a good three hours with? I mean the one that always springs to mind is Portal. Yeah. That's not a but I don't that's, think, that's a cheap I don't game. It, I I don't think it ever costs more than thirty dollars true so um i will say that the article does mention that developers have up to three months to implement a demo so i mean that could be used if the game is successful then they can use the profits from that to create the demo mm-hmm. and that might make it easier for them but at the same time if the game is not successful and they don't have a high profit but they still have to create this demo you know that could lead to more problems down the road for that studio collectively that's a good point. I'm assuming that the demo that they make is just going to be a piece of the finished game. Yeah. Um, K- Khalil Jama in the chat says, heads up, uh, according to Kotaku, uh, PlayStation is going to handle, like the store team is going to handle the trials. They're uh, going to handle creating the trials or are they going to be uh, communicating with the developers to help them create the trials? Yeah. Uh we're not sure. Well, where is this yeah. information even coming from anyway? So the the original the originator of the story was gamedeveloper.com. A okay. source spoke to them about timed timed game trials now being required. Okay. Uh I like demos that let you continue in the full game. That would be sick if you could do that. I I do like that a lot too. Um, Okay. Anyway, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Next. Square Square Enix Enix is dead. It's dying and nobody wants Square Enix anymore. They're giving it all away. 
Not exactly. Square Enix <laughs> sells off Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, IPs, and the studios behind them. Square Enix is selling off Western Studios, IDOS, Crystal Dynamics, and Square Enix Montreal, as well as the franchises those studios developed, including Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Thief, to Embracer Group. The company is announced uh, on Monday, yesterday. Uh, the $300 million deal will give Embracer Group ownership of more than 50 back catalog games from Square Enix's library and will affect 1,100 employees across three studios. The Swedish-based Embracer Group already owns publishing and development studios Gearbox Software, THQ Nordic, Saber Interactive, Koch Media, Deep Silver, and Coffee Stain Studios. Embracer has also expanded beyond video games to acquire Dark Horse Comics and tabletop game publisher Asmodi. 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 I got it right the first time. Embracer will have more than 14,000 employees, 10,000 game developers, and 124 internal studios when the deal with Square Enix closes. Square Enix says the sale of its studios and IP will establish a more efficient allocation of resources and enable the launch of new businesses by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, and the cloud. I, when I heard and this new, news... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't know there was more to the story. I had no idea. I'm no. so sorry. That was the it's okay. No, what were you going to say? I read th about this when it happened mm -hmm. in like the middle of the night, and uh, I had to Google who Embracer Group was. And yes. why why do they have any money at all? They uh, own THQ Nordic and Gearbox. Where is this money coming from? <laughs> uh well, it's a good thing I opened up this uh GameSpot article. Uh who is Embracer Group? The reason you may not recognize Embracer Group's name is that it operates several other publishers and developers with names you do recognize. Uh like we said, they own Deep Silver, THQ Nordic, and Gearbox. Uh, as well as over 100 studios, the company was pr the company was previously known as THQ Nordic, but adopted its current name to avoid confusion following its many acquisitions. I'm Embracer confused. Group, <laughs> you have confused me. <laughs> Let, all right, Embracer Group, when it was originally known as Nordic Games, was a very small operation that focused primarily on finding holes in the market it could capitalize on such as a lack of karaoke games on Nintendo systems in the late 2000s. After acquiring smaller properties and slowly growing while keeping costs low, it entered what's known as Phase 2. Embracer Group has grown enormously over the past several years, often by purchasing studios and franchises from other companies that are either letting them stay dormant or liquidating because of bankruptcy. This is how the company came to own much of the original THQ catalog, including Metro and Darksider series. It also eventually acquired the THQ name itself, with the Nordic publishing brand becoming THQ Nordic. So they started off as just called Nordic Games. They were a small company that were trying to find their niche in the market. Then slowly over time, they started acquiring uh, franchises and property that were falling by the wayside, the biggest acquisition was the THQ license. They bought a whole bunch of their games and eventually rebranded themselves as THQ Nordic. And then they continued that plan of expansion and growth and eventually rebranded as Embracer Group while st still keeping THQ Nordic as a subsidiary of the overall parent company. Does that make sense? No. No. I was looking into uh, a coffee coffee stain because uh, I think Kate McCann in the chat says, wait, not coffee stain. Uh, they did a goat simulator. Yes. Goat simulator payday. Waste of space, which is just the goat simulator logo. And Valheim. I didn't know they did Valheim. That was a big yeah. deal. Uh, that's all I know about these people. Um, yeah. So, like I said, their big thing was acquiring properties and pu and developers slowly but surely to build up their portfolio. Some of the franchises they own include uh, Destroy All Humans, Darksiders, Biomutant, uh, MX vs. ATV. Those are all THQ oh, properties. <laughs> they own Saint the Saints Row franchise. Don't die. It's not I'm worth dying. it. We don't got to talk about THQ anymore if it's going to be a problem. Saints Row, Homefront, Time Splitters, 
they actually re rebuilt the original Time Splitter Studio Free Radical Development because they own the property rights to Time Splitters and they want to make Time Splitters games. So they oh, rebuilt well, Free good. Radical with the original founders, David Doak and the other guy. Um, they own Aspire, the guys who remake all the Star Wars. Oh, games we like Aspire. Switch. They own uh, 3D Realms, the original Duke Nukem developers. Uh, Zen Studios, the creator of Pinball Effects. Uh, 4A Games, who created the Metro games. Um, Gearbox uh, Entertainment, who suck. Uh, and now <laughs> they own pretty much all of Square Enix's previously owned Western Studios, which were originally IDOS Interactive Studios. Um so Crystal Dynamics, IDOS Montreal, and whatever Square Enix Montreal's name is going to be. And those were big deal games. Those were Tomb Raider. Those were Deus Ex. Those were uh, originally the Hitman games, Thief, and a handful of other, others. So so, so these are development studios. Yes. Um, when they acquire these studios, do they now share ownership with the... Because now, now I'd imagine Square... Square's the publisher, too. Right. Do, no. Do, Embracer Group now owns Tomb Raider Wholesale. So completely. they can publish it themselves? Yes. Okay, that's pretty yes. crazy. That's pretty crazy that that Tomb Raider Deus Ex, and that's all I care about, that those two yeah. are being, are now, Square Enix has nothing to do with those anymore. What about Hitman? Yeah. Uh, Well, so that's a different story because Hit... Um, IO Interactive, who make Hitman, basically bought themselves out of their ownership from Square Enix and went independent and took the Hitman franchise with them. Interesting. Okay. So they own Hitman. I mean, the 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 older games, I don't know, but the current games, that's owned by IO Interactive. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is weird. I can't, I can't believe that uh they had mo that this that THQ had money to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's weird that out of nowhere... He, friggin', they don't even... They, they, even, like, with Gearbox, like, what they make fucking Borderlands. Like, that's their big IP. That's the whole thing that they have. What's weird is they bought Gearbox for, like, $1.3 billion, and they only bought... Um, the IDOS uh, companies for like 300 million. You would think that Tomb Raider alone would be worth more than 300 million. That's insane. That's yeah. crazy. It's It seems like Square just gave these away. They were like, we don't care here. Do whatever you want. Basically. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a meme at this point that Square Enix has a very bad handling of their Western made games. Right. Um, they famously did, uh, said that uh, the 2013 Tomb Raider game, which sold 9 million copies, was a disappointment. Um, Marvel's Avengers uh, cost so much money, it will never make a profit. Ever. Because they had to implement a live service game that like nobody's investing money into. Right. Um, part of the reason why IO left was because they borked the release of Hitman and then blamed... I owe for it. Uh, yeah, it. I Square Enix, like they basically bought IDOS to have a foothold in the Western games market. Back when, like Japanese publishers thought that was the way to be successful in the 21st century, when really it was just to make good fucking games. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like out of everyone, Square Enix like really had no idea what they were doing with these with their Western titles. Uh, I also oh. didn't know that they owned Dark Horse. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's kind of a huge deal. Yeah. That's a big uh, comics publisher. And manga. Like, yeah, I think they're like the fourth biggest comics publisher in the in the country. So. I, I think they only do manga in America, though. Only the American yeah, publishing. No. Yeah, I don't think they do yeah. the Japanese publishing for that stuff. Um, But yeah, I, I mean... I think there was like a time when uh, when game companies were trying to get into comics for ideas for games. Um, yeah. Maybe this had something to do with Darksiders. Was Darksiders a THQ thing? 
I think so. Darksiders was a THQ thing, yes. And it was, um, I forgot the guy's name. Like, the, the lead character designer was a comic book artist. I think it was Joe Matarita. I think that they had a tie-in with Dark Horse. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now Square Enix can focus all their time and attention on Final Fantasy, Dragon's Quest, and their stupid-ass NFT projects that they're working on. <laughs> oh, yeah, we forgot about their stupid-ass NFT projects yeah. that they're working on. They, they admit in the, in, the, in the press release, they're like, yeah, we sold these companies so we can invest in blockchain technology. <laughs> God, it's so stupid. Oh, it's Wildstorm it was a Darksiders comic. Oh, that's DC then. Weird. Never mind. Uh, okay. Well, good uh, on Embracer Group. Hopefully they are better to Tomb Raider than Square Enix was. <laughs> this just in, Embracer Group exists. Uh, L Chili Willy, thanks for the Prime subscription. I appreciate Thank it. you. Uh, Yuji Naka. He's he's fired. Get out of here. Uh, so so appa- apparently, this might be why Balan Wonder World Land sucks. Is because <laughs> like a month out from releasing the game, they just fired the guy who was making the game. It, it might be one of the reasons the game okay. was bad. That's a in, a, in a candid Twitter thread, celebrated game developer Yuji Naka revealed details about a lawsuit he filed against Square Enix and his struggle to make the ambitious but ultimately atrocious Balan Wonderworld a better game. In a thread written in Japanese and translated by The Verge, Naka wrote that he was removed as producer from Balan Wonderworld six months before its release and that he sued Square Enix shortly thereafter. Improving a game until the very end is what being a game creator is. And it's strange to make it impossible to do that, Naka wrote. I asked my lawyer to try to negotiate even just commenting on the production until the end, but I filed suit because I was refused. He said that he was removed for two reasons. The first involved comments he made about a decision to release a YouTuber's arrangement of a piece of Wonder World's music instead of the original song. I thought it was wrong that a piano arrangement of the game music by a YouTuber was used in a promotion for the for an original game, Naka wrote. When I insisted that the original song be used, it caused trouble. Naka stated that the other reason for his uh, release was because he took issue with the quality of work from Arzest, the game studio behind Balan Wonderworld's development. The relationship with Arzest fell apart when I made comments about wanting to improve the game or about RZS submitting the game without fixing bugs. Balan Wonderworld was a musical platformer that generated a lot of early buzz. It was a new franchise from Square Enix and Yuji Naka, famous for his work on the original Sonic the Hedgehog games, and it would serve as its director. However, post-launch, the game's whimsical, the game's whimsical luster faded, revealing shallow gameplay riddled with potentially harmful bugs. In game development, a game often has most of its pieces in place long before release date and any changes that could lead to costly delays in this thread Naka expressed frustration at not being taken he sorry he expressed frustration at being taken off the project as it uh contra- contravened his uh his philosophy of making corrections and improvements to a game up until the last minute something that served him well in the past Naka, the original programmer on Sonic the Hedgehog, shared that he came up with the now common convention of Sonic not dying as long as he has a single ring only two weeks before the game was sent to uh, to be sent for final approval. Naka said that his inability to continue working on the game was in part responsible for its poor performance. I believe the reception and reviews of Balan Wonder World that you all know have a lot to do with this situation. I'm truly disappointed that a product I worked on from the beginning has turned out this way. He also criticized his former employer, Square Enix, and Wonder World's developer, Arzest. They are companies that do not value games or game fans, he said. <laughs> In 2021, Naka left Square Enix and recently released a solo-developed mobile game. He also did not reveal the specifics of his suit against Square Enix and apologized to his fans, saying that in the future he'll be more responsive on social media. I am deeply sorry to the customers who bought that who to bought what I consider to be an unfinished Balan Wonder World. So, so 
I, well, first of all, when I read about this, I was misled into thinking that uh, the whole uh, 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 somebody. So I guess they used a fan arrangement of a song in some promotional material. Yeah, I I was misled into thinking that he, that was his decision. I guess uh, uh, some, something about yeah. the translation made me think that that was his decision, but apparently it wasn't. It was Square's decision or somebody's decision. Uh, yes. Anyway. Um, I think what's n- uh, interesting is that he doesn't mention that uh, they used his, they used him as promotion for the game. Like the only reason anybody gave a shit about this game was because he was involved yeah. in it. Yeah. So, so they, they f- <laughs> they, yeah, they had his name on it to develop the game, him, and then they fired him with six months around, left. Yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. kept his name on it to, to be like, this is the, the guy who made Sonic, made a game. Everybody buy it. Yeah. So, of course, there's grounds to sue for that. That's insane. Yeah. That that should be the like biggest argument for the suit is my yeah. name was on it and I was fired six months before the fucking game came out. Yeah. It's It's insane that it just makes you wonder like what the mindset is at Square Enix is right now because they're selling <laughs> off all their Western properties. Right. They fired a storied game developer from his own game for whatever reason, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a baff. It's baffling business decisions over there. Yeah. I don't you know. know. I, so so we, we thought that their Western stuff was in trouble, but now over here we have their uh, Japanese developers are also not very happy. Yeah. I, I don't think this solo developed mobile game. I don't, I think, wasn't this just, yeah, this is just a weird, it looks, yeah, I think this was weird. I think this was like a weird thing. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a weird dice thing. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's a weird, like, I don't know. I think Yuji Naka, like, like struck gold with Sonic and hasn't been able to do it again. <laughs> well, there was Knights. People like Knights. I don't, but people like it. I think people like Knights because it's the Sonic guy. I don't think they actually like Knights, you know? People like Knights because it was the only thing on the Saturn that wasn't Virtual Fighter. Yeah, and they had buyer's remorse for buying a Saturn. Um, Hey, Burning Rangers, pretty good Sega Saturn game. Yeah, it's true, true, true. It's pretty good. Um. Anyway, TechLink says they just wanted to use his name for marketing, but maybe didn't want him to actually work on the game. I mean, maybe they want to use his name for marketing and then realize this guy's a pain in the ass to work with. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, look, they did the same exact thing with Kojima, but Kojima was very open about being fired. Um, Yeah. And that was a little, that was less than six months. That was like very close to release. Yeah. That was like the game went gold and they were like, goodbye, Kojima, go. Well, I mean, the game wasn't finished. No, I don't know. I don't know how that worked. But it was, it, I'm pretty sure it was less than six months. Yeah. Because the game is, uh, it's very clearly unfinished. There's like a, there's like yeah. two whole like sections missing from. from uh, yeah, there's like game. a whole story beat, like just gone out of nowhere. Yeah, I think that maybe they want, he wanted to delay it again. And they were like, no, we can't give you more money. Yeah. Go away. I don't know. Uh, it's weird. Uh, that was a weird yeah. thing that Square just did. Two weird things that Square just did. Yeah. Hey, there's a new Call of Duty coming out. Who would have guessed it? Yeah, it's going to be Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. No, not that one. <laughs> Call we, of Duty we, returns. We knew this already. I know. It Now with official confirmation, it returns uh, to Modern Warfare this year from developer Infinity Ward and Activision Uh on Thursday, they show tweets uh, revealing the logo and the title of the next game, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This year's entry in the enduring shooter franchise is expected to arrive on consoles and PC later this year. On Twitter, the game's official account uh, teased the new era of Call of Duty is coming and posted a brief teaser video. That video offers a little more than an aesthetic tease, but very briefly shows the logo for Task Force 141, the international spec ops unit that served as the principal protagonist of the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 released in 2009. This year's game uh, may technically be called Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in an attempt to differentiate it from the other game that bears its name based on the logo above. 
So to differentiate it from the original Call of Duty Mo Modern Warfare 2, they're going to use the Roman numeral for 2 as opposed to the original version, which used the Ugh. Uh, Arabic number 2. Uh, this game is called N-I-I Squiggly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game is a direct sequel to 2019's Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Infinity Ward's reboot of the sub-brand that started in tw uh, 2007 with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the 2019 Modern Warfare has been the most successful Call of Duty title to date. Um, Activision has reportedly shown the new Modern Warfare 2 privately this week to NFL draft prospects in Las Vegas and is expected to show the game more widely soon. That's so dumb. Uh, this is not the only uh, shooter Activision has planned for uh, release. A new Warzone game, a built-from-the-ground-up free-to-play shooter with Battle Royale elements is also coming this year. The original Warzone was released in March 2020 and was part of the previous Modern Warfare Season 2 content. Since then, Activision and developer Raven Software have updated Warzone with content for Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 is my favorite Call of Duty of all time. I yes. w will probably not play this game outside of using it to unlock weapons in Warzone. Yeah. Uh I I'm excited I, for the I new bought, Warzone though. That should be fun. I I bought Modern Warfare the one from a few years ago because you know, it was a reboot of the original Modern Warfare, which is a game I really like. I figure let's see. I had to touch the Call of Duty in like 10 years. I'm like mm -hmm. let's see what what they've what they managed to how they managed to reinvent modern warfare and i played it and i realized that they didn't <laughs> it's the same fucking game from like yes. however many years ago it, it, it like it baffles my mind that you've been releasing a game a year every year and it's the same it's the same thing whatever little changes you can do to it it's like no it's it's the same game <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's it's bad. They've been releasing the same game since the original Modern Warfare. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we, this game was rumored to be delayed. Uh, some people were stating it as fact in articles. Uh, no, uh, the next year's Call no, no, of no. Duty. The, the next year's was was rumored to be delayed, and then people were saying that this one was also rumored to be delayed. They were saying it in articles, and we remember we had yeah. to look back and be like, "Wait, I thought the le the next year's was delayed." Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, next, yeah, ne wait, is it next year's or is it the year next after? year's? Next year's is rumored to be delayed, but okay. this year's was also room confused. It was people were confusing it with this one. Yeah. Anyway, um, one of the reasons I thought this one might have been delayed was because uh, one of the big uh, story beats is we're, we're at war with the Russians. And I don't know if you've oh, looked yeah. at the news at all, <laughs> but we might be going into war with the Russians. So is that, what are they yes. going to do? Are they just going to, are they just going to change the story? Like what the hell? Are they just well, going to go mean, with it? I mean, it's too late to change the story. Well, I don't, in a normal world, it's, it'd be too late to change the story. Mm-hmm. If the game's coming out in like five months, but Activision has been notorious in the past for just throwing developers at this game mm -hmm. to get it done as fast as possible. So if yeah. they wanted to change the story, they would could probably start throwing every studio they own, including the Blizzard Studios, on this game round the clock, twenty four seven, to get this out the door in a different state. Yeah. I remember when the whole Ukraine thing started happening. I uh, so I start, went back and watched cutscenes from the original Modern Warfare uh, 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 trilogy because I was like, "Wait, I've seen this before." <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to see. I'm again. I'm more excited for the uh, Warzone stuff. I'm. I'm burnt out on Warzone right now. I haven't really played. I've actually. Yeah. I actually played it this weekend. Uh, it was a horrible time. I got absolutely destroyed. Um, but I'll jump back into it when they uh, make a new war zone, maybe a better island yeah. or something. Uh, I'll give it a shot. All right. 
Uh, last news, Skull and Bones. What's this? Why do I care? Oh, the pirate thing? The Ubisoft yes. pirate thing. Awesome. Yes. Uh, narrated test footage for Skull and Bones has leaked online, showing off a big part of the Blockbuster transformation the blockbusters transformation since it was last officially shown at e3 2018 it's pretty and also looks like a textbook modern ubisoft game players will collect blueprints loot materials and build up their infamy rank to get bigger better ships uh rise and grind sailors uh the newly leaked <laughs> gameplay footage which runs over six minutes details how players will com uh, complete contracts for npcs to rank up and unlock new ship designs um, the footage, um, the footage has now been removed from the internet. Uh, they'll stock their ships with rations, water, repair kits, and ammunition before going out to sea. If their ship gets destroyed or their uh, crew mutinies, they'll lose rank and respawn somewhere else while other players have a chance to salvage their wreck. Sources tell Kotaku it could finally be out as soon as fall this year. When Skull and Bones was first revealed at E3 2017, it was pitched as a session-based shooter focusing on PvP. The new test footage instead emphasizes resource management, showing how players will harvest things like ore, lumber, and animal skins, which can then be refined at the main social hub into other materials. Crafting is an essential activity for you to progress to, to progress as an infamous pirate, the narrator says, footage stresses that the game can also be played solo, but Ubisoft recently described it as a multiplayer first. There is even a robust vanity shop for cosmetics. Uh, literally just with, literally just Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Literally the exact yeah. same thing. I'm looking at All Assassin's the, Creed Black Flag right now. You know, the things we didn't like the most about Assassin's Creed 3 and Black Flag, the boat stuff, they made a whole game out of it. <laughs> As reported last year, Skull and Bones development has been a mess, marked by a lack of clear direction, ballooning costs, and tons of attrition. Uh, spearheaded by Ubisoft Singapore, the project began as an expansion for 2013's Assassin's Creed Black Flag before <laughs> evolving into a half dozen other types of games in the near decades since. Uh, despite continued statements by Ubisoft that the game has... Uh, was coming along just fine. The delays and attrition continue in addition to alleged uh, tumult and misconduct at its lead studio. Skull and Bones lost an associate game director in December. Other high-ranking designers and writers have also recently departed. The game lost its latest producer just a couple of months ago. According to two sources familiar with the game's development, Ubisoft had hoped to launch Skull and Bones as early as this spring. That date uh, was later pushed to the summer, then September, there is mounting pressure to ship the game, which had, which some sources believe cost Ubisoft over $200 million at this point, oh in part because God. of an existing agreement with the Singapore government. Ubisoft did not immediately respond to a request for comment, but did acknowledge the leak in a tweet Friday teasing an official upcoming reveal of the rebooted project. A spokesperson has since provided the following statement. We confirm this is a glimpse of our upcoming game, Skull and Bones. Recently, we ran a technical test for the game, and some uh, and some of its details became public. This footage was taken from an early version of the game and doesn't reflect the quality and features of the final game. We'll share more details about the game soon. As a live service game, Skull and Bones will be expected to continue the growing and evolving even after it's released. But former developers associated with the project have spoken with with. Um, are skeptical it can deliver anything close to what the publisher or player might expect it to be at this point. Uh, a Reddit post where the footage was shared is a full of comments simply asking Ubisoft to make another Black Flag instead. What? <laughs> Why would you? I hate this. This is so Black Flag. This is clearly I'm Black Flag. So fucking stupid. This game costs them as much as uh, Square Enix. <laughs> A whole Square Enix worth of game here. Um, God, the, I the when I heard about this game, I immediately hated it because I knew it was Ubisoft just taking what they did with Black Flag and just making a whole fucking game out of it. And now yeah. we have footage and it literally just looks like Black Flag. It looks like all the stuff that I hated about Black Flag. Um, and I think that we were alone in hating that, the boat stuff. Yeah, we we famously refer to it as boat stuff <laughs> because we don't like it. We don't know what else to call it. 
You know, it's the, the easiest way to signify the thing, the part of the game we didn't like the most, which was the boat stuff. And here was a whole game we were blissfully going to be ignorant of because we were not going to play this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, lucky for us, it never came out. <laughs> but they're still trying to make it come out. <laughs> they're still working on it. I don't I, I mean, I, I think Assassin's Creed 4 reviewed well because people were into the boat stuff. You know why people were into the bow stuff because it was different. We had gotten like five Assassin's Creed games in a row once every year, mm -hmm. and the boat stuff was the most unique thing they could think of doing at the time. You played that game for any longer, and like it, it just, it's not fun. It's not fun. No. It's, and I can't it, imagine playing a whole game like that. Ubisoft does things the backwards way that Rockstar does things. Rockstar yeah. will make a whole ass game with a mechanic they want to try. And if it works out good, they will take that mechanic and put it in Grand Theft Auto. Ubisoft makes Assassin's Creed with a little side thing. And they're like, let's add tower defense to friggin' yeah. uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh, does it fit? I don't care. We'll shoehorn it in anyway. And then reviewers are like, there's a cool little tower defense minigame in Assassin's Creed. And we're over here like, why the fuck am I doing tower defense? Yeah. I just want to kill people with my little hand knife thing. And then Ubisoft will make a whole ass game out of the tower defense thing. Yeah. So I, I, that's why Ubisoft now is because they do shit like, I'm just trying to play Assassin's Creed. All of a sudden I got to do boat stuff. Yeah. So no, I don't know. I, this game has had a fairly, I don't know if it's well known or not, but it has had a a very well re, uh, reported on tumultuous development history. Like like they said, it's almost a decade on at this point. And it's just gone through constant revisions and constant development developer turnover, constant leadership changes, all because it has to be made in the Singapore studio for some reason. Um, apparently, at one point, the leader of the Singapore studio was like, a monster mm -hmm. <laughs> like an activision level monster um and that didn't help matters much uh at this point i think you know i feel like ubisoft might as well just cut their losses and move on make something else make another game or if you're if you're dead set on getting skull and bones out move it to another developer that you own they mm -hmm. announced today that they're moving Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time remake, another Ubisoft game with a lot of, uh, with a very tumultuous development. They're moving that back to Ubisoft Montreal, who created the original Sands of Time game. Uh, you, so you, if they're that set on getting Sands of Time remake released, that they're willing to change developer, why not do that with Skull and Bones? If you really want to get this stupid pirate game with boat stuff out <laughs> the door, give it to someone else. It's because they barely care about the quality of the game. They just want it out. They just want to put yeah. not a lot of money into it and get it out. Um, yeah. The people who are working on it are the ones who care about the quality of the game. And Ubisoft is kind of fighting against them being like, can you just freaking put it out? We don't care how good it is as long as it gives yeah. us money. Ubisoft has had... We talk, We just talked about last week. They're trying to sell it off because they, cause they yeah, are I, and, they're and not it, doing good. It makes you wonder if like this is all part of why they want to go out and you know sell the company because they put too much money into their boat stuff game mm -hmm. flow says boat stuff too close to sounding like butt stuff getting side eye from my wife you're watching he's watching porn porn he's watching porn <laughs> <laughs> he's being weird uh, anyway i there's one of, one of my favorite shows is uh letter kenny and the, the one of the main characters asks his friend, I'm going to ask you two questions. And then a, I'm going to ask you a question and a comment. My question is, when have you when have you ever heard a girl say, yes, 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 during sex, and not have it be in a porno? Mm -hmm. And my comment is, you did it wrong. <laughs> you did the impression of the yes, yes, yes wrong. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Are we done talking about Ubisoft and butt stuff? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's time for... I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. I got a weird thing going on, but it's time for this. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! I don't know why this doesn't come through. 
Uh, anyway, Twinkling Time, yay! Yeah. This is by Rudism. Everybody in the world sent this to me, and I understand why. This is uh, this guy, Rudism, took the Fisher Price uh, controller. Yes. <laughs> that just makes sounds every time you press a button. Uh, and uh, he made it a real life controller. Uh, but it also still has the sounds. <laughs> yeah. So every time you press a button, it makes this it, it makes, makes this it stupid annoying. sound. Yeah, sound yeah. Also of note, though, it does not have a right stick. No. So I was, I, it has this little toggle, and I was like, oh, he probably made the toggle like a right stick. The toggle, if you flip it, it makes the left stick a right stick. <laughs> oh. It toggles the left stick to act like a left stick or a right stick. Interesting. So this thing is just all around an abomination. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he here he's playing Elden Ring on his computer with it. So he got. I mean, I am, I am thoroughly impressed. My daughter has that thing. <laughs> it does make a lot of annoying sounds. The Konami code works on it though. And what does so, it do? It it makes like um. Legal, legally distinct Mario sounds, we'll say. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk to you guys really briefly because I got yes. a pee and I'm getting hungles. Let's let's start by uh, talking to people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. We got Bavesh Kabnani who says, Bob, games also earn more than they did in the 90s. Yes, budget is more than 1 million copies sold. It is not big like in early times. Stop apologizing for companies that inflate their marketing budgets. I'm going to agree with him on this. I'm being attacked. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're not wrong in a sense that games cost yeah. too little. In terms of mm -hmm. like what their budgets are, they should be mm -hmm. costing more. But at the same time, uh, to Bavesh's point, uh, that's because developer AAA developers keep adding shit to their games mm -hmm. that we don't that don't necessarily make the game better, mm -hmm. and they have these insane marketing budgets that also have to be uh, recouped through astronomical sales that uh, these games have no hope of uh, achieving. You know, it's this this push to make games as realistic looking as possible mm -hmm. has sort of created this scenario where they could never get the, you know, get the profit they need to stay afloat because they spent so much money on making the game look realistic rather than just making a good game. Yeah, There's I think... That th yeah. No, go ahead. There's a famous what? I was gonna say the the famous quote. I want shorter games, uh, that with worse graphics, uh, for less money that play well or whatever the hell it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what we really want. If a like, I think we as a society have reached a point, thanks to games like Minecraft and Braid and like the indie game revolution and whatnot. If a game doesn't have the most cutting edge graphics, that's fine as long as it's fun to play but there's still this desire to make things as big and open and realistic as possible and that requires a lot of time and money that will never be recouped i think the and, main the mainstream yeah. mouth breathing normies want those nice graphics that they, they might not say it but like you know they only care about the games that have those nice graphics yeah i mean that's i mean don't get me wrong that will help sell a game but right. that will not help keep a game right in the public eye for very long i know? i agree that yeah that there's a lot of, uh they spend way too much money on these stupid games and they do spend a lot of money on dumb shit that we never asked for and don't want to play or don't need or yeah. whatever like games started like call of duty went through a time when they were like we don't need single player people only play the multiplayer um i think that there's a lot more people that work at game studios now. Some of them are working on dumb shit nobody ever asked for. But there's yeah. a lot of game studios like Naughty Dog who are like like they they are spending a lot of money on the things that do matter. 
You know, like there's a lot of bad studios that are spending money needlessly, like making fucking skull and bones for 200, <laughs> spending $200 million doing nothing with it. But there's a lot of studios who are spending the money on all the right things, and it is very expensive. So my ignorant ass is assuming that everybody's got good intentions is trying to make the best art that they can. But I know that that's not the case. There are people, there are a lot of companies who just waste money on dumb shit like marketing. Um, so yeah, well, that, by that, g- game by studios that are throwing out money, but I think that there's also game studios that you know, spend the money in the right spot and it ends up being a lot, it ends up costing a lot of money because inflation happened. But what about things like, like uh, I'll use Rockstar as an example, Red Dead Redemption, the horses uh, had realistic testicle yeah. deformation as they rode. Mm-hmm. First of all, you had to pay somebody to research horse testicle deformation. I, have, I, have, I would be somebody had to shocked. animate it. And put that in the game for all the horses. I would be that- shocked if the guy who didn't do that wasn't incredibly passionate about it while he was doing it. If he was much- forced to do it, then I would be shocked. I think that How guy did it because he wanted to cost, do it. Bro. A did, lot of a lot make- of fucking money. Did that make the game any better? Absolutely not. But a lot of little things like that sucked together are going to make the game a little bit better. That's art, baby. You got to focus on the on the horse balls. I don't know, man. I I've never I like didn't look at the horse balls enough to see them deform in real what time. What the hell? And Why I, weren't you looking I, at that? And I doubt anybody else who played that game did. <laughs> except except for those poor people at IGN who did articles about that and had to capture footage of the horse testicles deforming mm-hmm. for their mm-hmm. shitty website player. Corey Guns says, Will is weird. I did. <laughs> um, no, but you're right. There are a lot of game companies that spend a lot of money on some needless shit. So, yeah, there is that. Yeah. yeah. But, so. but, but even without that, games... St- it's insane that games still cost the same exact that they did in the 90s. And in some cases, less than they did in the 90s. That is still right. an insane thing to think about. No, and... On the one hand, you're right, and on the other hand, uh, Bavesh is right. It, mm-hmm. It's a, it, it's an amalgamation of the two. I, I lean more towards Bavesh's side because it's a lot of stuff we didn't ask to be in games that is being the right. focus, and there's a reason why the games cost too much money. Like when they add a multiplayer to fucking Tomb Raider. Exactly. Uh... Lydon Gavin says, yo, the regrets are so good. Props, Will. I, I listen to music. <laughs> I have good taste in music. <laughs> William says, Periton to have Bob be Ayazawa for a My Hero... Ac- a petition to have Bob be Ayazawa <laughs> for a My Hero Academia live action movie. I started watching it since we talked about it last, and people said that I'm not that far behind. I just started rewatching season five. Oh, yeah. Uh, I still haven't gotten to the point where I stopped. I don't know what, uh, I don't know when I stopped. Well, I guess I, I guess I didn't stop that far behind. I don't know. Um, Melon says I had to send in my Wii back in the day to get serviced for a laser read error. They sent back the same console. I had a custom sticker on it had to have been mine, but they had like copied someone else's data to it including their family photos in the photos channel. Never seen those people in my life. Lost all my Wii data. Nintendo denied everything. That's so wow. weird. Wow. It sounds like they put your case on a different Wii. That's so yeah. weird. Yeah. That's so bizarre. Or there was an error on like backing up the information. I don't know. Yeah. It's just a laser read error. That should just be a disk drive that they just slop out. That's Yeah. That's a weird issue. I, I mean, see, this is the problem when you do you, you can't back up your save data. You get shit like this. No, it's bad customer experience. Nintendo still bald says, "Welcome to the Wolf Den podcast, where two middle aged men yell about a thirty year old game for an hour." That's right. Oh, that was Sonic last week. Yeah, <laughs> love the podcast. That's, by the way, thanks, dude. That is our right as. Uh, old white guys 
on the internet. We complain about things from our childhood that we expect you to like because it was better back then. Life was better back then. Yeah. So now we have internet. And internet's great. Yeah. Uh, and then Fred just says, how about them Islanders, huh? Listen, man. It's like the first year in their new arena. We'll let them get used to it. They'll they'll pick up steam, and next year, Stanley Cup. You watch. You that, watch. How do you can you bet a yeah? You can totally bet against the Islanders, right? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I'm doing most that. of the time. 1, most of the time, you should bet against the Islanders. Uh, so, so I, I, my roommate, uh, downloaded like the Caesars sports betting app because there was like yeah. a two hundred and fifty dollar Uber Eats credit. <laughs> and I was late to it, and I tried to do it, and I failed, but I still had to put $50 into the stupid app. So I ended yeah. up just doing two random bets. I bet on the 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 Rangers and the uh, the 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 Leafs, the, the Maple Leafs. Oh. And I won 15 bucks. Oh, look at that. I went up 15 bucks. So there you go. I'm a gambler now. There you go. I thought I would get a promotional credit for like Uber or something, but I don't think I got anything. I think I just did it for no reason. Anyway, uh, Mimi memes with a hundred bits. Bob, the the rim lighting slash edge lighting on on you is fire. That's what we're here for. Visual treats in a podcast. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm also. Sh uh, I also just decided. Fuck it. I'm going to stream at 24 frames per second now. <laughs> the stream so is still I've... 60. No, the stream's still 60, but my camera's 24. I decided, fuck it. Okay. I, I, I think it looks good. I was watching Teha Types. His Twitch streams are gorgeous. Yeah. And I was like, why am I trying to Twitch stream like I'm a Twitch streamer? I should Twitch stream like, I, like I'm a YouTuber. Also, I got a new camera. This is a new camera. That's the C70. Yeah, with a fifty dollar lens on it right now because I'm using my lens nice. to, to stream. <laughs> well, what are you streaming with? What camera are you streaming with? The R. Okay. The old EOS R. I have that. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, bro, I just got done rewatching episode thirty five to thirty seven of the podcast. Whoa! And remember, will <laughs> not wanting to talk about the results. LMAO. In terms of the Islanders. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you know. It sucks. <laughs> you know, three years, they were cl this close to getting to the Stanley Cup, and now all of a sudden, they're back to being the Islanders of my youth. Not fun. Mm -hmm. Not fun. Uh, Edward Bova says, Wolfden, so, Bob, what do you think of the all the interviews that Reggie is doing with G4 and IGN and Kind of Funny Games and more for his book tour? I think that's cool. I haven't seen any. I only saw him yeah. talk about stupid NFTs. Um, uh, he... He talked about blockchain specifically because he wanted True. to sell his Animal Crossing island on it. Yeah, so I don't think he understands <laughs> what it is. I I I, th I think um, the people around him are like pitching it to him like it's a technology that you can use to like certify like this is a digital thing that you own now. But like, yes. he has to know that's a thing that has existed already and you don't need the blockchain for that at all. Yeah, I don't think he's... He's probably just like a uh, surface level observer right. of the whole he, blockchain. He, that's what he said. He's like, I'm just I'm just taking a look at it, but it sounds nice. That's what basically he's been yeah. saying. I'm sure like, you know, Reggie's a smart guy. The more he looks at it, the more he will probably see it's, it's for scams, basically. Uh, yeah. I did see something that he did not like the Game Boy Micro. <laughs> Interesting. When it, that came out. That was incredible. I love that thing. Yeah. There was another thing I saw where like, oh, I also saw it was his idea to bundle Wii Sports with the Wii. Oh, and he shit. had to fight Miyamoto on that because Miyamoto didn't want to do that. No wonder there's nothing bundled with the Switch because Reggie's yeah. not there. Um uh, what else do I want to say? Oh yeah, Reggie also s specifically said um, he thinks blockchain stuff is a good idea if it benefits the player in the game and if it was built yeah. f from the beginning and not shoehorned in later. He said if it's a cash grab from the developer, then of course it's not going to work out right. Um, right. 
I just I just think uh, like if I want to sell my Animal Crossing Island, like like we had like in CS:GO, they already had a thing where if you had like skins and stuff, you can just sell them on the marketplace. Like that's a thing that's yeah. developed into the game. You don't need blockchain for that. Um. Do you think they will add Wii Sports Resort as an expansion pass DLC type thing? Oh no. I uh, that would be great, but no, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I mean it would make more it would make sense to have Wii Sports have Nintendo uh Switch Sports be like a platform and you keep adding new games to it. But mm -hmm. I don't know if Nintendo would go that you know, go that route. They're very weird about DLC. Although they just added all those Mario Kart DLCs, so. I am a little concerned. Uh, Chumbara with the Joy-Con is not that accurate. Like, like it's accurate, but it's not yeah. enough, and I don't remember it being that bad on, this, on the Wii, um, especially with the Motion Plus. I remember, like, right. sword fighting and, like, Zelda being a little better than that. So uh, I'm a little concerned that like just putting Sports Resort, like I'm a, I I don't know if the Joy-Con can handle it as much as the Motion Plus did, um, right? Especially because I think it's just that like you know the Joy-Con's so small and the and the Wii Mote with the Motion Plus was so big. Um, anyway, will you go into Doctor Strange this weekend? I had no idea that uh, movie came out. I know I keep forgetting that it's coming out this week. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't I even don't... remember Sam Raimi was directing it. I completely forgot that. Too. I know. Uh, I don't plan on seeing it this week. I, that's definitely going to be a wait for Disney Plus uh, watching experience. Uh, I am looking forward to it because I think Sam Raimi is the most interesting director that Marvel has gotten for anything in a long time. And I'll be interested to see uh, just what he can bring to especially a character whose last solo movie underwhelmed me. <laughs> so right. See how that goes. Uh, all right, we're done. Yeah, that's the end of the podcast. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitchtv wolfden If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtubecom podcast. So go check us out over there on demand. Whenever you want, if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolfden podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I'll see you Thursday for sure. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe Nintendo Switch Sports. I don't know. Um, go watch Dan right now because Dan has COVID and he's sad. <laughs> so go go, go over there and be like, Dan, how, Dan, how, Dan why are you so sad? <laughs> uh, I'll see you probably on Thursday. Maybe tomorrow if I'm getting, if I'm feeling a little cheeky. Uh, goodbye. Bye.